Ho, ho, happy holidays. Today I'm gonna to show you how to monogram on a fur stocking cuff, just like this with your home sewing machine. I did this by using my Octi Hoops. The Octi Hoops do come in actually three different sizes. They have, we have a small, medium, and large. The design I'm going to put on this stocking is windy and doing so by choosing which frame I think would fit best. I could use the small one. However, if I do, I may not have enough support for this big stocking, which is no doubt gonna get in the way. And you can see that there's nothing on this hoop to adhere it to another hoop as you would have with traditional embroidery frames. So we're gonna have to use something to help get the fabric onto the frame. To do this, we use our stick and tear stabilizer. This is an embroidery stabilizer that will stick onto the back of the Octi Hoop frame that I've chosen to use. And it comes in varying widths and lengths so that you can choose whichever one you want if you want to get a small one and you only want to use one of the small frame for your embroidery, then that's, that's fine. But if you ever want to embroider something really large that you have at least the 12 inch wide stick and tear by however many feet you feel that you're going to need. If you're going to do a lot of embroidery, you may want to stock up and buy a bigger roll. With the help of my Caterpillar light tablet, Especially if I were going to embroider on a sweatshirt or t-shirt and wanted to trace over a fabric that was thick, I placed my design beneath the pad on the Caterpillar light tablet and then I take my fabric and place it over the top of that. Then you can draw guidelines on the actual material and in this case the material is our cover-up. This helps you to know that you're going to be positioning this properly on your stocking. These are cross lines or guidelines to help you put it on your stocking straight. Also deciding how far down you want it to be, making sure you have a big enough piece of the cover up so that you don't write on your cutting mat instead. So this is about a half inch mark or a centimeter and I want to know that I have a centimeter from here as well so I'll draw right here. With the help of a little washi tape I'm securing my cover-up to the mat so it won't slip while I trace the name on it. You could use a painter's tape as well. The color pen that you choose will make it easier for you or harder for you. If you want, match the color of the marker to the thread that you're using, and then it will always be behind the embroidery. So if you don't cover up your fabric enough, well, you have red marker beneath it. If you really wanna make sure you do cover it, then use a color that is close to the color that you're actually gonna use for thread. I'm using this fuchsia instead of going with red and then you just want to trace over your design and I'm going to do this with the Caterpillar light tablet on for my benefit just a little bit because it's easier for me to see with the light on and this is when you really want to take your time and make sure that you do a good job because this is your pattern for the actual monogram if you feel as though you'd like the stitch to be bigger, well, you can actually alter by making the ink line wider while you're drawing it. And say that that line right there is a little bit too plain for you, well, you can swirl it out like that and embroider up there. Or you could do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm going to draw an X on that and leave it the way it was. I 
always keep my hand down when I'm drawing to give me more stability. With your hand down, you're less likely to make mistakes. Now I'm going to evaluate it. Do I like it? Would I like to have maybe a bigger line here? This is your chance to imagine this on your stocking. That fur is kind of thick, so you want to make sure that you are going to be able to see the thread. Or you can choose a font that's bigger to begin with. This is the cover-up that I drew over and the piece wasn't very big that I used, so this goes a long way. As does the stick and tear, because you can actually patch it. If you wanted to just do a little heart on maybe a child's little sock or on a t-shirt, then you would just have a little heart-shaped hole when you're finished embroidering that you can patch with another piece of the stick and tear, because this is patchable, and you can patch repeatedly until you absolutely have to replace the entire sheet. I'm taking place this down on a flat surface and make sure that the stabilizer side is facing up. The paper side is shiny and slick. So it's easy to tell which side is the stabilizer and which side is the paper release liner. Then simply draw a line around the frame. and trim the paper using paper scissors because the release liner on the back of this is a paper. You could use your rotary cutter as well. However, the rotary cutter blade will get dulled by the paper. So this is one of those times when I like to just use my scissors. Place the hoop with the side that has the holes on it down on a flat surface and then peel back the release liner by folding it and then it starts to loosen from the paper. I like to fold the paper and then position it so that it's right on the edge of one of the eight sides of the frame. Holding my hand down on that side, then you just pull out. Set this aside. and begin stretching and applying. It is a repositionable stabilizer, so you can lift it up and put it down. And what I'm doing right now is I'm not pushing it all the way to the edge of the frame, so you can see I have it lifted a little bit. Once I know that I've got it good all the way around, then I will rub that down. And the way to know if you have it in there correctly is that you don't want to see any creases or any wrinkly looks around the perimeter of the frame. Got a little bit right here. And then you can smooth it out all the way around. Making sure that you don't get it up along the edge of this because the bottom of the frames are designed for stabilizers to stick to and come off of. But if you wrap the stabilizer around the top, well, it's going to have a hard time coming off because the stick and tear really holds nicely. And here is my placement template. And I do like to keep my stitching close to the frame, either close to this side or close to that side to save the stick and tear from being wasted. You can take the release liner you released and cut and reposition it inside of the frame. And what that will do is protect this area from getting any lint on it. 
And then decide which way do you want your stocking to hang? Do you want it to hang this way or that way? Of course, you could practice by sewing on both sides and then you'll get even better. And then whomever you give this to, well, they can hang it either way, whichever way works for their house. In this case, I'm going to have it be this way. And I'm going to pin this in place, try to center it. And that's what these guidelines really help with. This guideline here can line up with the seam that's running right along the bottom. And then I have my Christmassy colored straight pins and I'm going to pin. As I pin this, I'm going to go in and out and in and out. That way it's more secure but still applying a couple more pins. And if you know me, you know that I don't use a lot of pins in my sewing. The temptation would be to use the liquid base glue for this, but know that the liquid base glue does not adhere to the cover up. So it's not an option. Another very important part of the pinning process is to not pin the cuff to the stocking because we need to get the stocking out of the way in order to place this on the hoop. But one of the really neat things about the stick and tear is that we can stick just that area down onto the sticky part. Careful not to poke yourself with the pins. Then you reach in and grab the toe of your stocking, holding down on the fabric so that it doesn't lift back up and pull that stocking away from you. And we pull on the cuff to get everything out of the way. And now you can see that it is nice and held away from me. To make it even easier, you can use tape and tape. I'm sticking this onto the cover up and then onto the frame and that holds it in place real nice for you. If you've watched me perform free motion embroidery before, you've probably noticed that I don't use a presser foot. That's because the hoops themselves behave like a foot and keep the fabric from lifting with the needle. But in this instance, because we have the cover up, the fur, and then the stabilizer, I am going to use a free motion embroidery foot. This is the foot that I'm going to use and it has a half circle. This goes over the needle bar and this goes where the presser foot is removed from your machine. So to do this, I loosen and remove the nut that holds my machine snap-on adapter on. And once it's off, we replace it with this one. And tighten the screw, but you wanna make sure you really tighten the screw. Use a screwdriver. And also tighten the screw on your needle bar. If you don't, your needle bar screw may loosen and your needle could fall off while doing embroidery. Match your bobbin thread to the needle thread. I'm using the Super Universal 9014 sewing machine needle for this. It's going to be the best choice for this particular process for sure because we have an adhesive on the stabilizer, we have fur, and then we have the vinyl on the top. So the Universal needle the super universal needle will be super duper and slide in and out of that real easy and prevent you from getting loops on the top of your monogram. Next, you lower your sewing machine's feed dogs if you have the ability to do so. If your machine doesn't have the ability, you can still do this. You just have to be a little bit more mindful because we're not gonna be actually pushing down against the fabric. Then carefully slide the hoop beneath the presser foot now, when I designed the Octi hoops, I did design them to make it so that you could slide the hoop with the foot on the machine. 
right below it. So you don't have to worry about taking anything apart to slide the hoop beneath the presser foot. The biggest challenge is going to be dealing with all of the extra stocking. It even might get caught on this part of your sewing machine. So you want to take your time and be relaxed. Don't rush this process. I am also going to take one of my bolster pillows, put it beneath my elbow, because with the Octi Hoops, you can actually rest your body as you do free motion. And then you're going to use this handle and actually insert it into the frame, into the holes on the frame like that. And then you're able to draw with your sewing machine. That makes it a lot easier to follow complex patterns and do monograms like this. Begin by selecting a straight stitch and reduce your thread tension one number less than normal. So if my machine's thread tension is normal at 4.0, I'm taking it down to 3.0. This will help the sewing machine deal with all of the different layers of fabric and not have the tension get all messy. You want to make sure you also lower the presser foot on your sewing machine because if you don't, your tension discs are not closed and that causes the needle thread to fall to the bottom, creating what people call the bird's nest, which is a really nasty pile of thread on the back side and your machine can seize and make all kinds of awful noises. So always have that foot lowered before you go ahead and sew. If you need glasses, put them on. And now I'm going to stitch all the way around the design using a straight stitch to anchor the cover up to the stocking. I've also selected a center needle position. I'm bringing up the bobbin thread for the first stitch. Otherwise, your sewing machine will just not sew a stitch. My goal is to go on both sides of the line all the way around the monogram and you'll hear it sound funny because the needle's going through the vinyl. A short stitch length which is controlled by you because the stitch length is how fast you run the machine and how fast you move your hands. If you run the machine fast and your hands move really slow, you're going to get a really, really small stitch. If you have the machine run slow and you move your hands fast, you'll get a really big stitch. And what we want is a short stitch or close together, but not so close that you just stop moving altogether. Do your best. You see how I'm holding on to the cover up? That is only necessary until you get this anchored down. But you don't need to get your fingers right next to the foot. It's harder to see when you're going backward because the presser foot is in your way. So I'm trying to see over here, not where my needle is, but over there and head in that direction. Should have cut that tail before I started sewing. I'll do it now. This pin could poke me, so I'm going to get rid of it now. We don't need it anymore. 
I just want to make sure the stocking isn't folded under because we don't want to sew the cuff to the cuff. I also like to do a crisscross pattern going along wide areas. This will help to ensure that it doesn't lift up or come off during the embroidery process. And we're going to be stitching over that. You can reduce the speed control on your sewing machine a little bit to make it so that you can't go too fast and startle yourself, making yourself then move suddenly. So I'm basically just going left and right, left and right, not really worrying about what it looks like right now. Working my way back to the W, which I've saved for last. Now I raise the foot and then slide over and then lower the foot. That reduces the chance of your thread breaking or your needle breaking because if you don't raise the foot and you move your fabric over, the needle might bend slightly and then the next time your needle goes down into the machine, it hits the throat plate instead of going into the opening. Double checking to make sure my stocking didn't get tucked under. Time to get rid of this pin. Make sure it's held down. Remember this sticky stabilizer is beneath there to hold it down for you. And the last pin. I'm going to cross, do that cross stitching again, crisscrossing it over all the way around this W. but it will in a minute. Oh, last pin. When we monogram, we are essentially using the same principles as calligraphy. If you've ever used a calligraphy pen, you know that you have to hold the pen in a, in a, at a specific angle and never turn your wrist, but always keep your wrist in one position and move it up and over. And that way when you go sideways, the line gets skinnier. When you go up, the, the line gets bolder. Generally, also in monogramming, we want to make sure that we 
tip the fabric a little bit so that it gets that curvy look as we move along. So as you sew with the octi hoops, generally using a straight stitch, it doesn't matter if you steer the hoop like you're driving a car. But when you monogram, you only want to go up and down and side to side, never circles like this. You can do that for other embroidery, but not for monogramming. So I'm going to make a decision on which position I want it, and then I'm not going to, to do any more turning. And as I choose the stitch, I'm probably going to use a zigzag stitch for a good portion of this, but I'm going to change my stitch width as I move around. That will speed this process up considerably. However, you can monogram with just a straight stitch if that's all your sewing machine has. So I'll start by showing you how to monogram with a straight stitch only, and then I'll switch to the zigzag and we'll finish this up. Based on how wide the stitch is on this W, I feel as though it would be about a three and a half millimeter, four millimeter wide zigzag. And I'll be, I would be changing the width all the way around because it tapers. Using a straight stitch instead, we don't have to change our width or anything. And frequently I will opt to use a straight stitch with a zigzag motion. I also need to turn, I'm gonna tip the hoop just a little bit and that's the position I'm gonna maintain. Slow down the machine and you move the hoop in a zigzag motion. So for those of you who do not have a zigzag stitch, this is how you do it. So you can see that I'm moving my fingers left to right, creating a zigzag with a straight stitch. And my elbow is resting on the table as I do this and my hand is on the sewing machine. My fingers are steering the hoop with just little movements with the sewing machine's speed greatly reduced when doing a zigzag movement with a straight stitch. Now I'm gonna change to the zigzag stitch for the remainder of this monogram and uh, decide the width and help you to understand what you need to do. So right here, I feel like it's about a three millimeter wide width, so I'm switching to a zigzag stitch. When I did that, on your machine, your feed dogs might come up. If they do, lower them. Mine did not, mine stayed down. So now I don't need to move my fingers. I will keep the hoop steady and now only move the hoop up and down and side to side and let the needle swing left and right. Come down quicker and then go back up. If whatever you have to go down and then come back up again, you always want to go down faster and then come up slower. Now I'm going to go over here and do this, this side and leave the middle to be done similar to the straight stitch in that I'm moving slightly side to side with a narrow width and filling in that larger section. That's one way of accomplishing a large area. You can also go in with a straight stitch after you've done that and beautify this by taking it and going all the way across. And now it looks like you have this gigantic zigzag stitch. Oof. 
keep that angle or the zigzag stitch won't look right. Switching back to a zigzag stitch. I'm at a three and a half width. And I'm gonna go up. A little bit faster than I come down. I'm going to have to go down and come back up again. So once again, go down quicker and then come back up slow. And I'm going to move in this side to side motion. And I'm going to go wider. Looks like it's a 4.5 at its widest, and so I'm going a half millimeter wider. Taking my time because I'm not going to be coming back down this. Now I'm going to switch to a straight stitch. Go all the way around the W on both sides. And it's going to sound loud sometimes because the needle is going through all that thread. This is when you can see that by using the pink colored marker, I know I covered up all of that marker because I don't see any pink anymore. Also notice my fingers are not close to the needle, they're off to the side. I'm holding the frame. I like to do this on all my monograms to go around the edge after. It, it tidies everything up. This is also going to make it easier for the cover-up to tear away clean. If you're watching this and have an embroidery machine and are wondering if you can use the stabilizers we're using for your embroidery machine, you absolutely can. All right, the W is officially done. I'm going to raise the presser foot, cut the thread, and hop over here. Keeping the hoop in the same tipped angle, and this width is about a three. I'm going to make it a 3.5. Starting off with a straight stitch always to secure your stitch, then we, I'm going to change to a zigzag stitch, go to a three and a half millimeter wide width, and then you're checking to make sure your needle is proper. In other words, that it's not going too far or too small for the line that you drew. And then think about how would you write this with a pen? You would go, this, you want to use the same motion that you would with a pen. It's easier for your brain to think of it that way. If you don't feel comfortable going fast, you don't want to be going really fast. See how I'm, I'm resting my body as well? And as I come down, I'm going to have to go back up on this again. So I come down slower. I mean, <laughs> move. So when you have to do that, you go down faster, moving your hand faster. And now I'm going to go back up, moving my hand slower. You might hear plucking sound, and that's the sound of the needle going through all the thicknesses telling you that you're going too slow. I'm going to set my sewing machine to a little bit wider width now. It's a 4.5. 
4.0 width. Now it's a D, so on a letter on the letter D, you would go up and over, right? So that means you gotta go quick one time and then come back slow. This part of the D, I don't have to go over again, so I go slow. Now I gotta go up quick. letter and as before we want to be thinking about if you got to go back up and down Now I'm going to switch to the straight stitch and as I did on the W, I'm going to go all the way around the outer perimeter of the stitching with a straight stitch, tight stitch length or moving my hand slowly, trying to not go outside of the design because you'll just have to rip those stitches out if you do. So take your time. All the way around. It is your chance to inspect as well. I'm going to hop over. Now it's your chance to double check and make sure you did a good job. Anywhere that you feel like you need to stitch it, now's the time to touch it up. I think I did a good job. So on to the next part, taking it out of the hoop and getting to see our beautiful work. I'm going to raise the presser foot to open the tension discs and now just slide it out, being mindful of the needle. And that's what it looks like on the back because we used the same color in the needle as we did in the bobbin. Looking carefully to see that we don't need to touch anything up because once you take it out of the hoop, well, you just have to hoop it again. Now you pull toward the embroidery and I do like to take the cover up off before taking it out of the hoop. Just in case, after I take that off, I then see something.
the areas in, in the little centers are going to need a little bit more attention. If there's ever a time when you have some of the cover up not cut clean away, you can use a blow dryer and kind of shrink up the vinyl. Now I'm going to pull toward the embroidery and it creates a hole in the stabilizer the same shape as the embroidery itself. And because I put the paper release liner back in there, now all I need to do is patch it with another piece this large. And I can hoop another stocking without having to get an entire hooping of the stick and tear stabilizer, saving some pennies for what we're going to put inside the stocking. We're going to go ahead and turn the stocking right side out and expose the beautiful monogram done with a regular sewing machine. I hope that you feel brave enough to try this. And if you're interested in more information about the OctaHoops and any of the other products I used in this video, you'll find their links in the description below the video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. And I look forward to getting to know you better inside of my online community, createwithclairerowley.com. Another link found in the description below the video. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Bye and see you next time. Creative Feet. What will you create?